FlossTube. I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and it is December 1st, 2018. I had planned out my videos for November and not intended to go so long without a video, but in all of my looking at the dates and looking at my husband's work schedule and everything else, I forgot Thanksgiving was in there, so this is later than I thought it would be. My daughter decided this year that she wanted to do Thanksgiving at her house. So she did the turkey and the whole full-blown Thanksgiving dinner, and it was wonderful and fun and much less stressful than a lot of other Thanksgivings have been. So I've been a lot more productive since the last time I shared projects with you. A couple of videos ago, I showed you the halfway home shawl and told you that I originally planned to donate it when it was finished, but... Then I kind of fell in love with it and felt guilty about keeping it for myself. And a couple of you told me it was okay to keep it for myself. So, thank you. I have been wearing this all over the place. And because it is this big garter stitch triangle, it stays on my shoulders. And if I had donated that, I wouldn't have known that. So, this is mine. I'm going to make more in this shape and pattern and donate them. And goodness knows I have the yarn for that. I have, since the last video, knitted another shawl. This one is with yarn from the Hobby Lobby Yarn Clearance Incident, if you remember that, a few months ago. It took four skeins. Unfortunately, the first two skeins were fine. The third and fourth skeins had way, way, way too many knots in them. Like a knot every four or five yards. So I've got way more ends hiding here in the back than I would like, but it's warm and it's nice and it's okay. I have since the weather over the past few weeks has, it was cold enough one night to freeze our pump, then it's gotten up into the 50s, it just does not seem to know what it wants to be and I am really enjoying all of the shawls and the hand knit socks and all of the warm stuff. And I've been stitching. I've been working on my peach piece for the Hedgehog Sal. I love this kit. I told you last time how much I love this kit. And the more I work on it, the more I love it. And I am so, so happy for the peer pressure of these stitch alongs. Because I have all these things in my stash and all the good intentions of the world. I want to do them. I'm going to do them. But then life happens, and I tell myself I can do it a little bit later, a little bit later, and I don't get around to it, or I get distracted by something else. I would not have started this already if it wasn't for the stitch along. So, thank you, thank you, Ginger, Gerald, and Buckeye Stitcher, and oh, I hope I didn't get that wrong. Amy at Amy Deville and I are doing our dimension stitch along, and I've made surprising amount of progress since the 15th. This is two weeks worth of work and I'm loving it. I keep some of these colors when you look at them up close they scare me and I worry that is this what that's supposed to be except I'm really sure I did sort my colors properly and I don't because this is a thrifted kit I don't have the original illustrations so I make myself a little crazy hoping I'm using the right floss in the right spot. I have also worked a little bit on Girl with Cosmos. All I have left to do on her is filling in her dress. I finished the basket, so I just have this mess of grass around her feet to do. Kind of wrestling with, do I work on what I want to work on, which I don't know what that is from moment to moment, or do I let the stitch alongs go for a couple of weeks and finish her by the end of the year. So she's entirely a 2018 project. I don't know. I haven't decided. And I, the past few years, I like Black Friday. I am, I'm all for the old school get up at four in the morning and stand in line Black Friday, which isn't how anyone does it anymore, which kind of, took the fun out of it. The past couple of years I haven't gone to the craft stores because I have batting, I have thread, there's nothing that I need to get up that early in the morning for that those stores carry. So I did go on Etsy and I 
I was going to buy myself some patterns from my Etsy wish list, but then I looked and no, this is not at all meant as criticism of the designers, but at 10% off, I decided that maybe it would be better if I waited till I was actually ready to stitch them and then paid full price. But while I was contemplating all of that, I found this one and I am, I love it. I want to stitch it. It is Stretching Portraits by Good Morning Maui. Of course, it's the Haunted Mansion portraits from Disneyland. I looked at the stitch count. Somehow my brain didn't quite translate how big these were going to be. So I went from, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to print it, I'm going to start stitching to, oh, that's big. Do I have fabric for that? But I'm going to stitch these. I'm happy with them. I also got a Krampus is coming project that I don't have. There's no picture on the pattern that I can share with you, but I hope to start stitching on it soon. And what else? Do I, oh, printed out some other stuff that I already had downloaded and saved. So I have new things to start. November is looking December. November was more productive than October, and hopefully December will at be at least as productive as November was. Shout outs. I have discovered two new floss tubers, new to me floss tubers since last time I did any shout outs. And I should have written down the name so I didn't get them wrong. The Crafty Whippet and Ardith Designs. Ardith Designs, the thing I love most about her is her attitude towards saving the stitches. She's just really fun to watch and I'll put links to both of them in the description below. So something else that I wanted to share with you and I've wavered back and forth on whether I should because I'm getting up on my soapbox again and guys I promise I'm out of soapbox issues to get up on. But three days from now is the anniversary of my husband's car accident. And it's been five years since that night, which, that was a long five years. And I just wanted, because I do make references to the accident, the accident absolutely turned our lives upside down. So I thought that I would very briefly explain what happened and interject my little soapbox moment. So December 3rd, 2013, I was making dinner, waiting for my husband to get home from work, and got a phone call. And the phone call, I can't remember exactly what he said. I knew there had been an accident. I knew it was on the highway between work and home. So I turned off the burners on the stove, asked my oldest to watch her younger brothers, got in the car, and started driving looking for emergency vehicles. And then I sat with my view of our car blocked by fire trucks and ambulances for it must have been an hour and a half before they got him into the ambulance and took him to the hospital. And I didn't see the car until later, but I will insert a picture here of what happened to our car. The car that crossed the center line and hit him was a little Honda. The little Honda was worse. The driver was not wearing her seatbelt, so I would not wish those injuries on anybody. Uh, she was under the influence of more substances than our lawyer had ever seen on one person's toxicology report at the same time and crossed the center line at 55 miles an hour and thank God for SUVs and airbags and as bad as that car, as our car looked, my husband got off really easy. Really easy means severed tendons in his ankle and a year of being unable to work and off of his feet. So that is why I refer to the accident because it's this big stretch of, oh my God, that derailed our lives for pretty much a solid year. So when I refer to my husband's accident, that is 
what I'm referring to. And my little on my soapbox moment here. I hope I do not have to tell any of you not to take lots of recreational and prescription drugs and get behind the wheel because honestly, if you're doing that, I don't think we can be friends. Sorry. I understand that maybe there is a gray area where you can go consume alcohol and not realize how much is in your system, but please, please don't get behind the wheel if there's any question that you shouldn't be behind the wheel. And my bigger thing that is really what I want to say is please don't enable other people and listen to their, oh my god, I got drunk and I hit my garbage can and I hurt my car and it's going to cost so much to fix stories because it's not okay. We had a news story on, I think, night before last where a drunk driver killed someone's grandmother. And there are all these commercials on the radio about if you're driving while you're buzzed, it could cost you $10,000. Don't get me wrong, $10,000 is a lot of money compared to my husband's lost wages and medical bills. $10,000 is nothing. Also compared to the fact that my husband is still in pain. He will be probably in pain for the rest of his life. His ankle is never going to be what it was. And I feel I should interject, he's in pain, it's the walking around hurting every day, taking lots of Advil pain, not still on strong prescription medication pain, because you can't take that stuff long term. And the other thing is, please don't skate by on the minimum auto insurance coverage that the state says you have to have, because if something happens, it won't be enough. We did not get enough out of our insurance policy to even cover the medical bills and lost wages. And it almost doesn't make it matter because money wouldn't have made it better. I mean, it would have taken some stress off and we wouldn't have been afraid of losing the house, but it wouldn't have made the pain and the hassle and the whole rest of it better. So. That is my little soapbox for December. I promise I will try not to jump on any soapboxes again for a good long while, but I wanted to throw that out there, and the anniversary of the accident seemed like the right time to do it. Now and then I also refer to the accident that I got hurt in, but mine was, I was rear-ended at a red light and broke my knee and the knee surgery went bad, so that's nothing to do with drunk drivers or any of that so thank you so much for watching thank you if you stuck with me through my sad story of car accidents i really i need it, it's a huge punctuation point in my life and things are either before the accident or after the accident same as 10 years earlier than that they're before we bought the house and moved down here and after we bought the house and moved down here it's just some things happen and they kind of punctuate your life with great big ellipses and dashes. And I hope to get a lot more done in December. I'm not really a great woohoo holidays person. So I'm going to detract, distract myself from the calendar by stitching and knitting, I hope. I... Thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and left comments. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate them. And I will be back with more soon.